All right, welcome to It Is What It Is. I'm Shaw Marie. I'm Jean. And we're going to talk about one, two episodes of two different shows. Jean only watched one of them while she caught, like, the last, well, the important shit. She yeah. had, like, the last, like, yeah. 40 minutes of yeah. it in Word. I pause a lot because I have to write a lot of shit down, so it takes me, like, an hour episode takes me, like, two hour, two hours. So, she caught the last of it. You didn't pause very much. Well, no, because you're here. Yeah. I don't have to write it down to tell you. You fucking saw it. We can just... Discuss. Discuss it. But, oh, then I'll tell you, I'll tell you guys and her, obviously, about the one I watched that she failed to watch. Because I guess there was miscommunication, which I guess we need to work on. We always have that. <coughs> A misunderstanding of sorts. Yeah. And so she watched some boring ass shit on BTK. But he's not boring. But <laughs> He is boring. He's a horrible man, but he is boring. He had a lot of victims. We'll talk about him one day. His daughter impresses yeah. the shit out of me. Yeah. So we'll talk about them. But that's what she ended up watching instead of what she should have watched. Mm -hmm. So now I get to tell her. Maybe I can run that episode. No. There you go. <laughs> You want to do BTK? Sure. All by yourself? All right. Well, oh I'm not God, doing cool. a solo one. You just well, act like, like you, you tell know it. what I'm talking about. Yeah. All right. You tell it All and right. I'll listen. Now i got to watch you go and take notes. God damn it. Uh, do you know how much you have to do now? You know how much there is on BTK? Responsibility. <laughs> so I just got super stoked. Anywho. Obsession. Yeah, we are so talking about Obsessed, Dark Desires, up Season 5, Episode 3. This isn't like obsessed with Christmas decorations. No, this is... This is a, dark, scary... Yeah. Bullshit. Like, super, super... Super, super freaky, scary. You hope to God it never happens to you or anybody else. Like, I jokingly was like, oh, I had a stalker. Well, it wasn't joking. And that was scary. Yeah. But, OMG. Yeah. The shit on this show... I have a hard time wrapping my mind me. around it because like I was telling you before, I don't beg. If you don't want to be with me, then that's it. Drop it. You don't have to kill this person. Well, if I can't have you, nobody can. Or maybe if I slash my tire or your tires, you'll love me. You know? Well, and the shit that they do is like <coughs> so crazy. Yeah. Just like you said, like it's so crazy. I guess we should tell you guys what the fuck we're talking about because uh, you guys don't even well, know. Well, if, 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 Hold on, I don't even know. Like, maybe they don't even know, like Gene. This. They don't even know. We gotta tell you guys. Hold on. So, not just in Siberia, Russia. Russia. In April of 2000, this banging chick named Catalina. And her looks don't really matter, but she's gorgeous. So I'm saying it. Yeah. Anyway, she was born there. Siberia, They. she said, was in the middle part of Russia. She grew up in the theater. Her mom was an artist. Her mom made costumes for plays. And so she grew up in the theater where everything was just beautiful and lavish and just amazing all the time. But she knew she needed to find love. And so her friends were like, go to America. No, no. Her friends were like, hey, in these magazines on the back pages, there's like personal ads with people like wanting to like write letters and shit. Mm-hmm. And so she sent out a couple different letters to a couple different fellas. One dude wrote back. His name is Frank. So the reason why she didn't want to date in Siberia is because her view on those men were that they were just drunks, abusive, and she didn't want that. That's what she knew them to be, so she didn't want that. <coughs> so don't hate on me. <coughs> totally her point of view watch the damn episode she says it that's who I got it from so anyway Frank writes her and they correspond for some time in the spring is when this letter comes she realizes that there's an age difference between them she's 22 Frank's 45 Whoa. so yeah which is kind of big Kind of big. Kind of big. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not like Anna Nicole Smith big. Frank's not on his fucking deathbed. Yeah. You know what I mean? That is fucking big. So, it's not that big. If you're going to go that way. Comparison. 
which I do. You have to judge people by the worst, you know what I mean? I guess. Anywho, <laughs> so five months into it, he travels from Atlanta, Georgia to Russia. Wow. To meet her. And when he gets there... That takes some planning, because you have yeah. to have a visa to go into Russia. Well, yeah, because this was like her thing. She was like... Because in the letters and everything else, he's Prince Charming. So well, she's yeah. like, if he cuts, like, if he really loves me, he'll come here. Mm -hmm. Which, no shit. That's a fucking commitment. Yeah. So he does. Yeah. And he stays there for 10 days. While he's there... He asked for her hand to marriage. And she was like, mm, well, no, because I just met you. Yeah, kind of weird. So, like, go back. And then if you come back to Russia a second time, I will give you your answer. Like, it wasn't even like a, I will for sure or not. But when he gets there the first time, she's kind of let down because it's kind of like catfished. Because she sees all these smiling, adorable pictures of him. She gets there and he's some grumpy old dude that just looks grumpy. Yeah. And just, ugh, just grumpy umpy. And so she was kind of like, well, maybe it's... Stress from yeah. Russia. She did, dude. This poor girl put it all on her in every sense of the way. Mm -hmm. So anyway, when he goes back again... What was the time period in between? Like a um, No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so he goes in the spring... Well, five months of the fall. Jesus. He goes, that's the first time. And then he goes back in January again. And then she moves to Atlanta in July of 01. July 21st. And then she moves there July, the beginning of July when she got to Atlanta. And when she got to Atlanta, she knew right off the bat that like this probably wasn't a good idea, but let's just do it. Let's see what happens. Like she oh, knew maybe this wasn't okay. Funny. But let's remember just that do Red it. Flags episode we talked yeah. about. Yeah. She just knew, like, because he was still grumpy. It was weird. He didn't like take her around Atlanta and show, show her. her anything. He was just like, "Oh, go put your bags upstairs. Fucking make yourself at home. I gotta go." And so she was like, "Okay, cool. I'm alone. I'm sad." Uh huh. But. 21, I'm going to guess, she got, they got married on the 21st, so I'm going to say two, two weeks after getting here, mm -hmm. we'll assume, because that's my favorite thing to do, we'll just assume that then they got married, but they really did get married on July 1st, and after they get married, he, he puts it down, and he's like, so check it out, now that you said I do, there's some, going to be some things you got to do. Hmm. And you're going to have a schedule of chores every day and time frames to do which to do these chores in. And so she immediately started cooking, cleaning, cooking, cleaning. And when she would do a chore, he would come in and like the inspect one. It? Yeah, inspect it. The one thing that she talked about was like one time she did the dishes. He came in, found a dirty cup. And then it turned into a whole thing where now we're washing all the cups again. And he did told her that he would be back in an hour to check it. Like, he gave her an extra hour to complete it. And when she would take walks around the neighborhood or anything like that, he would time her. And give her, like, a time limit of and to do these things. Because mm. he told her, he's like, well, now you're here. Oh, and he took her documents. Her documents from Russia to here. Mm -hmm. Which... Your passport, your... Which is... Your everything. Dude, it's hard mm -hmm. to get... Replace those. Those are not just something you can go and get a fucking copy of from an office. Mm -hmm. It's hard. So he takes them. And then one night, <laughs> they rent a movie, okay, from Blockbuster Video. We miss a Blockbuster. No, oh, I oh, know. Oh, God. Yep. Ugh. Hastings. Hold on one second. Let's just mourn Hastings and Blockbuster. Yep. Okay. There's no Go death this in side. this, so no one can fucking judge me. She lives and she's a strong ass person, so yes. don't judge me. We can crack jokes. <laughs> mourn Hastings and Blockbuster, guys. They died. 
and they need to come back. Or a Hollywood video. Yeah. Ugh! The last thing I ever rented from there, you guys, I'll be totally honest right now, the Lizzie McGuire DVD. Oh, really? Oh, yes. What was the other one besides Hastings that was around here? The local ones, not the big chain ones. Oh, I don't know. There was a couple of them. There was CD World. Mm, yeah, CD World. We yeah. School with those guys. Anyway. So sad, guys. Yeah. So sad. So anyway. Sorry. So, Rambly. I'm not sorry. Mourn them. <laughs> They lost their lives, guys. It's sad. They were great companies. Anyway. I know, but now you can, you know, get your movie. No, it's just not the same, and we're not going to go down that path, because then I'm going to get super fucking sad and mad. I shouldn't be able to watch it on my phone. It should take effort. Do you have lost a movie and have to pay $40 for one? No, I'd always just get a new account. Oh. I'd anyway. Account, she sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so they go to watch the movie, right? For some reason... She was doing chores earlier that day in the living room and unplugged the TV, which I think is like the weirdest thing you would unplug. Okay, you know in my house how I have that, that rectangle table? So yeah. sometimes when I'm vacuuming and stuff, I'll unplug that shit so I can get it out of my way. Or not vacuuming. <laughs> Sweeping and shit. So I can move my shit and clean how I want and get everything. So I can kind of see that. I never unplug my TV. That's so weird. So weird to me. No, I haven't dusted in the office, but that's another issue. That is just so weird to me. I'm sorry. That's just so weird. I never unplug my TVs ever. I'm usually watching them while I clean. So to unplug it would just stop my show and that would just not happen. No. Oh. I guess I'm a lazy cleaner. Anyway. So he loses his Shit, dude. He fucking snaps. Comes unglued. We have a domestic violence situation. In Blockbuster? No, at home. Oh. Because the TV was unplugged. Um, they went and got the movie and mm. went home and the TV was unplugged. So, so he lost his shit. And what he wanted to have. Yes. Yeah. So he lost his cool fucking physical things were done. We now have put skin on skin. We have now touched each other in a physical not good way. How come he just didn't go plug the TV back in and sit out? Well, maybe he plugged it in and then slapped her ass. I don't know. The show didn't say that. The show, this is where you come in at. And she's like, oh, no, no, no. We haven't got to where Jean came in at. Hold on. My God. <clears throat> this is still unknown to her. So he cuts his arm, calls the police, tells the police. And he's looking at her while he's making this phone call, she says. Okay, so this show claims that every reenactment is done by the words of the victim, so that's what I'm going off of. So when I refer to her, she don't take me seriously, because I'm not 100%. I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, well, he's looking her eye to eye, and he calls the cops, and he's like, my wife fucking stabbed me. So the cops come and arrest her and press charges. And she's getting handcuffed, and she's like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Like, she's new. She has no idea what the fuck's going on. She's not new. This is a couple months in, but like, the, well, to be she's arrested still new. and you're in another country, yeah, on a lie. Oh my god! And you don't have your passport. So well, you don't know. It. You don't you know, know anything that's going on. Yeah, you're being taken out of your home, going to jail in yeah. America. Yeah. Fuck off. No. Scary. Crazy. In Georgia. In Georgia. No. Hell no. So that's on October first. So, when she, when he beats her up for the first time, she remembers the day, Over the obviously. TV being unplugged. Yep. That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard So, life. he would go to the jail and see her with, like, his arm all bandaged up, and, like, he would tell her, like, if you come home and be a good girl, then I'll drop the charges, and this will all go away. And she, well, I don't know if she said this once again, I'm doing what I do best. She said, fuck you. Mm-hmm. No. Well, she did say no. But I'm just adding the fuck you in there. But she said that. Anyway. And she told everybody. She's like, no. She's like, I will find a way to prove that you're a lying fucking ass. Like, I didn't stab you. I will not say I did. Mm -hmm. And so, um, she calls a friend in Russia. Which. From jail? That's what I thought. And that's what I said to myself. I said, it cost me so much to get a phone call from Boise. That's four hours away. 
I could call Russia? For f the same price? Maybe? I'm just saying that's legit shit. Mm hmm If that's... If you can do that in Atlanta... Maybe the friend was here in the U.S. and... But then again... had a cell phone or something. No. No, her friend wasn't in the fucking U.S., Jean. <laughs> her friend her was Russia. in Russia. In the Ukraine. <coughs> <coughs> so, no. Hmm. Probably had to give, like, a hundred bucks for that phone call. I, yeah, I have no idea how that was done. <laughs> I really don't. I just know that that's who she called. Yeah. Because then the friend from the Ukraine calls the women domestic debuse, debuse, uh, abuse, 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 debuse, debuse, the debuse shelter. We have a new word. Sorry. The abuse shelter <laughs> calls them, tells them the story and they're like, what the fuck? So they reach out to Catalina and they're like, Hey, we got a f call from your friend. Mm -hmm. Is this shit true? And she was like, yes. Crazy. Right. And, and her, she's still in jail? And she's in jail. Okay. And they're like, well, has Frank offered to get you out of jail? And she's like, yeah, if I go back, he said he'll bomb me out. And they're like, well, check it out. We're a shelter. So your bond is like smidgen too high for us. Yeah. So call Frank. Tell Frank you love him. You'll come back. You'll be a good kid. Sorry for unplugging the TV. Yeah. Sorry Jeez. for the TV incident. <laughs> Never happened again. And this poor girl says it. And she says when she does that she just feels like gross. so gross about herself. Yeah. Like even saying it inside, she's like puking. Yeah. She's like, uh, she's disgusted with herself and let down because she had to say it. Well, because she went all that way to avoid yeah being beat up. Yeah. Yeah. Like she came here for a different life than what she got. I like how we're both checking the screen. Oh, she's ballsy. I like how we're both doing that. Well, anyway, but yeah, so she was, so they do get her out. So I guess the shelter and the cops were in cahoots. Uh -huh. They have a friendship and a bond and oh, whatever. Good. All you in this make place. Cookies. And um, so when Frank posts her bond, the cops take her out the back door and release her to the women's shelter. So immediately she's put into a shelter. She's taken away from the whole situation. Yeah. And so she thinks she's survived it. She was in jail for 18 days, like I said. Um, so the cops were dealing with a mad Frank at the front of the jail when she was leaving, obviously, because he was there to get her and she was not there. Mm -hmm. So he started the divorce proceedings in a, they assume, in a way to find out where she was. Oh, yeah. But he hired a private detective. So this women's shelter was only known to police, employees, women of the shelter, and the cops. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it was supposed to be a secret location. Um, he hires a PI. The PI finds out where she is. Frank is seen up to 20 times outside of there. And when he finds out where she is, he starts threatening her again about killing her and she needed to come back. And then, so yeah, he was seen there up to 20 times. I still didn't do anything. So here Jean comes in. So now we're dating this new guy named Jeff. Don't know if that's his real name. In the show, we're dating Jeff now. And Frank is still acting fucking crazy as shit. This is where you come in. Now you know what we're talking about. Yeah. Frank's nuts. And so they're planning around Christmas time to take a trip from Georgia to Colorado to visit Jeff's family mm -hmm. and all that. Well, obviously Big they're step, not going to introduce the girlfriend. Yeah. Yep. So they're stoked. And Jeff is like, well, let me go move our normal car, our daily driver, to the back of the house. Yeah. We'll park it in the back. Hopefully Crazy Jeff don't see it. Yeah. And so he goes and does that. Next thing we know, there's a big crash boom. Mm-hmm. Jeff's wrecked into the neighbor's garden. How did Jeff wreck? His fucking brakes were cut. Yeah. So we call the police. Yeah. The police can't do nothing. Why? Because we can't prove it's Frank. 
We just assume it's Frank. We cannot prove no, it's Frank. No, people don't even cut their brakes line. They don't even well, know Well, and the Frank line calls is. after this incident. Mm -hmm. Frank calls the home line and is like, Do you like my present? Whoa. He did an evil laugh. I'm adding that. Mm -hmm. But he asked if he liked her present like a douchebag. And so she's like, ah, and she hung up. And they proved that all the phone calls were coming from phone booths. <laughs> Back in the good old day of a phone booth. Oh, yeah. All around areas where Catalina... God, I just love her fucking name. And Jeff lived. Next baby, Catalina. Hands down. <laughs> okay, moving on. What is it, so, boy? Catalina. This is a new day and age. Gene, I can do whatever the fuck I want. He can identify as <laughs> what he wants. Anyway. So, um... Then... They go to Frank's house because now they get the right to get a warrant and everything else because, like, shit's already, we've got, shit's gone too far. Uh -huh. Well, what set it over the edge is <coughs> Frank emails Jeff. Jeff a link to a porn site with Catalina's picture on said porn site. And it was signed Big Daddy, which I saw that. They didn't mention it, but I saw it. Yeah, I saw it too. Big Daddy, my ass. Anywho, so they get in, the, and then Frank, I mean, Frank stole $60,000 from Six Jeff's thousand. account. 6000 yeah. sorry. $6,000 from Jeff's account because he went through their mail and got their blank checkbook. Yeah. So, oh. so he gets it. the, I know guys, this is my phone so <laughs> weird. You guys should all tell me on social media that I need a new phone and maybe my husband will give me one. Maybe Santa Claus. No, You've been a Santa good girl. didn't. Santa didn't. Santa's broke as fuck. <laughs> but no. Anyway, sorry. Back to this. So that's what really tips it over the edge because now we're doing like cyber crimes. I don't uh -huh. think it's a thing. But that's what they use to get the warrant to prove all this nonsense. To get the computer is what they're trying to prove. It is a thing. It's a great big thing. Well, now it is. Yeah. I don't know if it was back then. In well, and anything over... Um, I've had my identity stolen before. It's actually not cool at all. Um, oh, just... And anything over 5000 is a felony. Oh, okay. So he does this. Yeah. He does the $6,000 blank check, goes to the bank and just cashes it. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. Which she finds to be very <laughs> odd that he was just able to do that. But he did. Something. So, when they go to his house, they described it as being plastic. Plastic. Like no person of the human race lived there. You know when, like... <clears throat> did you guys watch the Monk? Agent, the agent goes in and... Did you ever watch Monk? No. Oh my god. Guys... I don't, I'm having so many problems. But okay, so anybody who's watched a monk. It's the guy with the hair. The OCD. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> picture his cupboards, how everything's like in a row and it's like super creepy scary. Alphabetized. Everything was alphabetized. Like sleeping with the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. There that we go. So super creepy shit. Like just nothing on the walls, which I judge so many people if you don't have things on your walls. Like how do you live in there? Like, when I moved and got into the place I'm in now, I waited maybe 30 minutes before I hung the pictures on the wall. There's a lot of wall space in here. But, yeah, like, I waited 30 minutes. Because I was like, this is mine. Yeah. Uh, my picture's on it. <coughs> no, I claimed it. It's better than peeing on the wall. Mm-hmm. You know, because you pee on things that are yours. So, when they go to Frank's house... <laughs> Frank's in fucking Russia doing what? We don't know. But he is again... In Russia. In Russia. Yeah. And so they meet him at the airport. They arrest him. And he goes to jail for, they say, like seven, eight months. Something like that. It wasn't very long. And then... He gets out. The oh, judge wait. gives him probation. You forgot to say how many guns. They oh found my in god! His house. Yeah. So they in give his, his house, guns back. I don't understand. In his house, he has guns underneath the seats in the living room. Shotguns, handguns. Shotguns, handguns. Yeah. I mean, we got Money. guns galore. Yeah. We're just 
blaze it. When with did guns. they find out the the passports in different names? That's when they found that too. They found a bunch of IDs and passports in missing people's names that he had in his possession. But then you get time served and probation. Yeah, and he got out and he got his guns back, and we wasted a good ten minutes of our lives. Going back and trying to find out why they he got his guns back, mm -hmm. but they didn't say. So he just did. So they call Catalina, love him, and tell her, "Watch out!" Yeah, he has guns. He's out. He's probably super pissed. If you thought he was mad before, girl, will see him now. Mm -hmm. Mad. It's kind of like that Vine network. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so she's scared because now she's pregnant with child, with Jeff. We are now having a child. We have, like, we're... See, and that sucks. Your first pregnancy, you're supposed yeah. to be excited and And, and, and everything happy, else, and but you're, you're already nervous. Yeah. And so now she's afraid mm -hmm. because she's been afraid since she got to here. <sighs> this is useless. <laughs> but, sorry, not the story. You guys, sorry, that made no sense. I'm so sorry, guys. That made no sense to you guys. <laughs> anyway. We're going to learn sign language. Yeah, one of these days. But, so, she's terrified or whatever. The cops learn of all this information. They send one officer. Oh, honey. To Frank's house. Mm -hmm. And... When he pulls up to Frank's house, Frank, without even, hi, officer, how you been doing? Nothing. Open fire. Turned around and opened fire. The cop was shot two, five times. He emptied two clips in the process of the shootout with Frank. Frank was shot and killed. He was shot 17 times. I'm wondering if the cop was actually, like, shot Five times and then more hit his vest. They said some did hit his vest. Yeah. The first one was to his shoulder. Yeah. But you got pressure points in your shoulder yeah. area, yo. So, I mean, he it's was bad. shot. Yeah. But he still won the good battle. Yeah. So. Yeah, because he helped. And he emptied two clips on that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Put him down. He was put down. So, now well, Catalina went on. Stop. No, he was never going to stop. This was a vicious. Well, and when they pulled up, he was. Loading shit into a moving truck. Yeah. Isn't that convenient? And this moving truck was going? not packed with household items. It was a bunch of, like, equipment. Uh-huh. Like, weird equipment. So, yeah, he died by officer the cop lived. That's really what's important. There. Yes. Yes. Good job, officer. Why, why did they send him alone? But that's, that's, that's the... Don't get obsessed about people like that. Especially if you've been rejected, you take a deep breath, honey, and... Go on about your day. Right. Don't obsess and want to kill them because that'll fix it or make them love you. I don't I can't wrap my brain around that. No. I don't know. But she won in the end because now she has a really good life. Two gorgeous little girls. A husband that doesn't beat her up. Yeah. A precious, like, you know. Yeah. Now she gets to live out the real, like, American dream. Well, and she's working. Yeah. Probably likes that. Yeah. You, you know? know, all that good stuff. But good. Survived obsession. Yeah. But now that I'm looking at what time we have, you guys, I think I'm just going to give you guys that one by itself and give you guys just like a 30 minute -er. Because I don't know if I can explain all of this before we run out of time because there's like a bunch in my next one because it's a shattered one and so we got to go back and forth a lot so yeah ha 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 you guys won't get to today you won't should we try you're such a tease should we try if you want to Fuck, I'm nervous. Worst case scenario, we'll do a two-parter. You guys don't mind that, do you? I wonder if I can put them all into one episode. I probably can. We are feisty like that. All right, guys. You know what? Fuck it. JK, pulled the cloak over your eyes, but guess what? 
I am going to take a break real quick, and then we'll be back in just a second. Hold on. We're back. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for your patience. Yeah, like you guys waited so damn long. Anyway, <laughs> you waited 2.5 seconds. Don't quote me on that. Anyway, so we're going to my favorite show. Because it warms my heart and makes me sad all at the same time. Shattered. Ch -ch. That's more law and order. The ch -ch. <laughs> I don't know. Shattered's like, Psh. Yeah. When I worked in the yeah. shop, I made that sound a lot. Psh. So yeah, it's shattered. The three lives. One crime. No return. Yeah. But boom. And we are going to Illinois. West Frankfort. Fort. Fert. 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 And in this episode, we have Officer Jeff Tharp, Mother Cindy, and Sister Shauna. Okay. Who speak on part of one of the victim, one of the bad guy, and the cop. So, 911 gets a welfare check from a family member that says... My family member hasn't come to work. Mm -hmm. And so they go out there when he goes to, he, oh, Jeff is now this chief of police, just so everybody knows. Really sweet guy. Anyway, so there's blood all over the screen door, mm -hmm. all over it. And so he sends the cop that was with him. He's like, go around back and see if there's another entrance yeah. to this place. Because we don't know what's going on now. Yeah. And so he's trying to get in. And he finally pushes the door open enough that feet, he can see feet now oh, shit. behind the door. Yeah. And so he's like, oh, fuck. Fuckaroo. Back and, up? Yeah. So he's like, obviously, he's like, we're going to need more assistance here. So he opened it enough just for them to slide in to see what happened. Inside, there was two dead bodies of two women. The victims are Candace and Terry, both beautiful women in a lesbian relationship. Aww. So they are gorgeous, beautiful, just amazing women. Anyway, and 22 caliber shells on the floor. There was money on the table and nothing was disturbed. So they don't think it was a robbery in their, in his mind. He said that the sales people were there to kill. So they start asking the neighbors. They're like, so tell us about these guys. And they're like, well, those ladies are amazing. No one really had any bad things to say about them or anything like that. But they did point out that the roommates are gone. They're like, they, they're at, there's been a couple that's been living there. Mm -hmm. And that is Afton, Afton Ferris and Michael Shimmerlit. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's right or not. I don't care. But, and the couple's car was gone. And they were on the run from the cops. We'll pause on them. So, the mom says that they're in a good place when this happens she goes to the house because it goes on the news that there's been this shooting. No one's been identified yet, but it's on the news and it's of their house. So she just goes. So she just goes. Oh no. She just goes. They don't let her in. Yeah. Of course. But she asks the cops for confirmation and they confirm it. Who's, which mom? This is Candace's mom. Mm. And she really is an amazing, I really, I truly, you never hope that when something happens to your children that you have grace and whatever. And I know inside this poor lady is just crumbling, but yeah, I will hope to hand, have the outlook that she does because it's just amazing. Anyway, um, so Candace was a really good kid. All the way up until 8th grade. 8th grade's kind of when she started falling off. She started smoking pot, doing other drugs, drinking, smoking, rebelling, all that stuff. 
And then it happened so fast that, like, it was just years of this. The cycle. Mm Mm-hmm. The always, I'm so sorry, it'll never happen again, I'm gonna change, blah, blah, blah. That cycle started. Yeah. All the way up until she met Terry. And when she met Terry, things started to turn out for the best. Like, things were changing. And then Terry's friend, Michael, who was from Colorado, got a hold of Terry and pretty much was like, hey, we're homeless. Me and my girlfriend, we need a place to stay. Mm Mm-hmm. So. You say yes. Yeah. So we stopped there. No, wait, hold on. So, okay, no, this is important that her mom has to do with. So her mom, the last time she talked to Candace, one of the last times, Candace told her that she was going to have to kick Michael and his girlfriend out for stealing. And so the mom was like, well, you know, I mean, that's what happens. Hopefully it doesn't turn into a bad dispute. Like, good luck. I'm sorry, you have to deal with that. There's nothing really that the mom could do, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That is why I, I hate that. So Money just disappearing, and then everybody looks at you like you're done. Yeah. Well, and like, things are just, yeah, it's money, different little things. Mm-hmm. Um, so, after they remove the bodies and they open the house back up, her mom goes there. No one told this poor woman that nothing had been cleaned. It still they remained. They didn't clean up after the well, homicide? Well, no. No, no one cleans it unless you hire someone to clean it. I thought the cops did. No, not unless they they pay for the cleaning. Unless it's like a tragic thing. Normal homicides, the family, you clean up after it. Unless you hire someone. you The family can pay for it to be done. Same thing with suicides. You do the cleaning unless you pay for... Well, that's my experience with it. You pay for the cleaning unless you clean it yourself. No. But anyway, the cleaning... No. The chalk outline and everything's were all still there. Oh. And there was the pools of blood and the blood everywhere. And so... Her mom said she went there to get, like, the valuables, the, like, stuff that means something to her. Yeah. But she left pissed the fuck off. Yeah. Like, to see what happened was nuts. Well, and and you said earlier that her daughter seemed to be changing for the better. Yeah. And I reflect back on that as when someone's loving you Mm -hmm. and you're happy. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, when you love somebody, you push them to do better for themselves and and, and, and love themselves. Yeah. I don't know. That's really sad. Super so sad. So you finally, she finally found that person. Mm-hmm. So when she <sighs> was going through her daughter's belongings, she came upon her pride list, is what it was entitled, where she had written down the things that have made her proud about her life. This is Candace's life. Mm -hmm. Making the cheerleading squad in the eighth grade, getting merit badges for Girl Scouts, graduating high school while pregnant, getting a lot of medals for singing, painting a large room for my mom, cheered for Jordan A. Logan College, helped a homeless friend out to get back on their feet, Successfully completed a drug program and changed my life for the best. Good. Won first beauty contest contest when I was 14 years old. And her mom puts the list down and said, the things that she was proud of are the things that got her killed. Because this list has Michael on it. So now we'll go to the sister. So the sister... And the family are watching the news. Candace's sister? No. This is Michael's sister. Oh. Um, they're watching the news and Michael and... His girlfriend? Yeah, hold on. Her name's hard to remember. I don't know why it's so hard for me to remember. But it is. Afton? 
Yeah. I don't know why. But Afton, anyway. Michael and Afton. Michael and Afton, yeah. So they see their pictures on the news saying mm. that they're wanted. Oh, good. In, in questioning of this homicide. They're yeah. not, no one's, they're not charged. As a family member, when you see a loved one uh, on the news, it upsets you. Believe me, my brother's been the poster front page child before. It's very embarrassing. I've seen, yeah. But she knows Not that her brother is a sweet, loving, caring, would never do anything like that. And she said she never got a good feeling of from Afton. Even when they met, she'd never tried to, like, get to know the sister. So the sister automatically hated her. And I speak to that for volumes. Like, if my brothers are dating yeah, girls... I agree. You best be trying to get to know me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because believe me, girl, at the end of the day, I will reign over you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, that's just me. But they said that they never got good vibes from her. Um, When he met her, she was couch hopping, so he was trying to help her out. Save a hoe? Yeah, um, it was save a hoe mission. And they said that his addiction was mainly her. And that they were from Cheyenne, Wyoming. So the family's trying to call him, but they're having no luck. They, the sister says the only one place that he could be is we have a cabin in Colorado. A family cabin. Yeah. And on the way there, she's planning her sister yell. She's planning it. The what the fuck are you thinking? Mm -hmm. What did you do? Well, it's that. also, it is a red flag. If yeah. you are with somebody and then all of a sudden your life turns into homelessness. I mean, and not after a catastrophe like a fire yeah. or a cancer scare, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But when this person's drug you down, and it could be male or female. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, it happens both ways. Yeah. But so, the whole way there, they drive through the night. Um, when they get there, the mom and the sister are the ones who drive. Um, she thought in her head at the same time, like yelling and punishing him, she's thinking, well, how fast can we get to Mexico from here? Like, how fast can I get you away from going to jail and That's you your, being safe? It's your just your protectiveness. Sibling, yep. So she's having these, she's fighting in her head. It's a big battle. It's a big war. How We're many hours fighting. drive did she have to go through this? Just from Wyoming to Colorado. Oh, okay. So, um... When they get there, the cabin's been broken into, a window's been broken, things have been tossed around. They've been there, but they're not there. Why so, would they trash the family cabin? God only knows. And so these idiots um, are on the run from the cops. <laughs> they're still using credit cards. Uh huh. So the cops are able to track oh, so them. Not smart. Okay. Yeah, no. Sorry. So the cops are able to track them to Colorado. So the U.S. Marshals get involved. Mm -hmm. They're located within two days um, in a trailer park. They parked the stolen car right outside the trailer. Yep. <laughs> you guys, I did that for you. <laughs> that happened. Um, they made it three days on the run. So. Next time, use cash. Yeah, and the and sister's feeling way. guilty because um, he had asked to move in with her and asked no. for help. And she said, you are more than welcome to come, but her not so much. She shouldn't feel guilty about that. And so she does. She feels guilty because I'll tell you why. Okay, so the cops talked to Afton first. And she says it's the only choice that they had. Okay? Just hold on. Don't say anything yet. I will tell you. Hold on. So, in her words, this is what happened. And I literally paused the entire show word for word and wrote this shit down. Wow. I'm not even kidding Dedication. You. Okay. She said, and they had the exact same stories, both Michael and her. Okay. So, she says, first thing, sitting down, how did you find us so fast? And the cop's like, we'll fucking get to that, okay? I'm asking We ain't here about that. Yeah. Tell me what happened. And she's like, oh, I'll fucking tell you. I'll tell you what happened. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you right now. He's like, well, great. Continue. 
So she does. Okay. The plan was just act like we were going to go say sorry and say, can we come in and apologize? And then we would shoot them then and then take the car and possibly go down to South Texas or something. We didn't have any choice. The cop to go and kill them, getting what you wanted, what you could, what you could and get there and take their car and go. Pause. That was the only option you had her that was my option that was the only option the cop says then what she says i was sitting next to terry on this couch and michael was sitting on a chair they were yelling at us on how about how we had stolen their stuff and he was like fuck this he stood up and he shot her oh. she went backwards and then he shot terry she was lying face down, facing the kitchen, and then she, Terry was moaning and groaning, so I told him, give me the gun, and I shot her in her left eye. So they admit it to the whole thing, and they go to him, and he gives the exact same story, except for he says, I don't know what happened. Like, I, I broke. Like, I fucking snapped. Like, yeah. they were yelling. It was getting crazy. He had the gun. It was already a plan. It just didn't go as planned. Why don't you just go get a job? Well, they left the money. Well, I did. <sighs> and they're yelling at you for stealing CDs. Uh-huh. CDs? Well, don't steal shit. Go get a job. But, yeah, this is what happened, guys. So, um... Those people weren't out of line to defend themselves. No. And I stand by what I said, neither does the sister. She shouldn't feel guilty about being like, you know what, no. Well, that I'll tell you about the sister, here. hold on. So, he said in his 33 years of experience, the he detective. has never... Yeah. He had never met anybody so cold, and just talking to her, he knew that she was a killer. Afton pled not guilty to two counts of murder. So she's going to go to trial. We'll put her on hold for a smeckit. Why would you plead not guilty when she confessed it? I don't know. She had a master plan. Okay. But Michael pleads guilty, which shocks his family. His sister is heartbroken. Oh, honey. And during that time, they can't talk about anything until the case is... He done. pleads guilty and it's done. So there's nothing they she can't ask him any of the questions she's wanting to ask him. Mm -hmm. She can't yell at him Dying. like she's wanting yeah. to. Yeah. She's breaking inside. So once he pleads guilty, they can finally have the real talk of what the fuck. And she goes off on like, this is murder, dude. This isn't a bank robbery. This isn't something stupid. Like you killed someone. What the fuck were you thinking? And he tells her, he's like, I didn't shoot anybody. She did. But I didn't want her to go to jail by herself, so I took the blame, and that's why I said I was guilty, so that Afton didn't go by herself and go to jail. And Big Sister said, oh, hell no. No, Big Sister believes that till this very day, well, that he never pulled the trigger. How come he didn't appeal then? Because he said he was he is guilty. She watched the interview for the first time. The TV producers of Shattered showed her his interrogation. Uh-huh. And she said when she was watching that, that she could feel his pain and she could feel his sorrow and everything else. But she knows that he wasn't the one that killed them. Even though he said he did and they both told the same exact story. Mm -hmm. She's still choosing to believe what he told her after the fact is that he didn't and he just is ride or die with her. And so he just took the blame for something he didn't do. So, um, like I said, she was just sad. And he did say it in his interrogation that he did it for Afton. And, like, they were scared of losing each other. It's the only thing that they had was each other. And then she starts breaking. Like, when he mentions, like, like he says, we only have each other. She has no one. And really, I don't have anyone. That's when she breaks. Yeah, that was nice. Mm -hmm. That's when she breaks. But she still closes the laptop and is like, my brother said that he didn't. 
And the officer even said, without Afton, Michael's not a killer. Like, if it wouldn't have been for her, mm -hmm. Michael would have never taken that path. Yeah. So, she's a, what she is, I guess. Well, now she has a girlfriend, so you're really not with her. Yeah, and in... Her ass is in jail? Yeah, and in okay. 2011, Afton is found guilty of two counts of murder, armed robbery, and discharging a firearm with intent to harm. Both of them are serving two life sentences. In Illinois. Wow. So I talked really fast through that, and I'm glad we didn't stop recording now that Yay. I think about it. Because I talked really super fast through it, and we got through it. That's pretty senseless and dumb. Yeah. You know. It's horrible. Absolutely horrible. When you And they didn't talk about her kid. The only thing I know from her kid is the happy things in her life. Yeah. Probably with the family. list. That's the only thing. Um, her mom says, No one saw her like I saw her. She was my little girl. And then she, when after her death, her mom was going through her, um, through her own box and found a letter that Candace had given a card that Candace had given her. And in the card, she thanks her mom for never giving up on her. And for always believing in her and having her back. And then said, P.S. She thanked God for save, sending her an angel as a mom. Oh, honey. So, yeah. It's super sad. Uh, super, just, super, it's super just sad. senseless because when you open your home and yourself to somebody else to live with yeah. them, get them on their feet because they're homeless. And I that's mean, the I'm only sure option you had? Yeah. Fuck off. Yeah. You set parameters. You're like, how can you improve this? Can you yeah. go get a job? It's not the well, only Well, and that's option. why they were going to get kicked out. Is like, it wasn't just the stealing, but like, nothing was improving. Stealing on top of it, especially when you're putting yourself out there. They're probably feeding these guys, uh -huh. too. And then you steal what I have. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'd be pissed. For sure. He got mad because they were yelling at him. Come on now. Yeah, and Come he broke. Now. I guess under the stress of everything... You throw your hands up and walk out the door. And he wouldn't. He told his sister, he's like, I'm in a bad way. Like, I'm in a bad spot. She Let me come live with spot. you. Yeah. Whatever. And the sister was like, well, you can, of course. She cannot. So I guess that's when this, like, frantic, like, we have to do something to stay together, to be together, to get away. We got to do something. Mm -hmm. We can't live here. We've stolen from them. We got to go. Mm-hmm whatever they're already in a whole different place because we've already now gone from wyoming to illinois mm -hmm. and now the plan is to go to texas and they thought but the thing is is like in because everything got so crazy and so hectic that they didn't even take the money and there was money sitting out on the table and everything mm -hmm. like they truly ran to colorado to their friends to his friends. Yeah. And hid out. For three days. And her only concern. When she gets arrested. Is how did you get me? You used your credit card. Okay. You're fucking dumb. So that's how we got you. Big surprise. Whoop whoop. With a Shocker. question like that. Don't even tell her. She'll right. Just be like. Out in a couple of years. You you'll know get it in your you. report. Dumbass. Yeah. You'll know. Idiot. So it's just. I don't know. A hard time. Go to a daily. Replay. She, dude, Maybe and it's crazy. Somebody, come on. Now. You guys watch the episode. Like I said, it's episode season three, episode ten. But um, watch it because her confession is the scariest thing in the world. Because mm. she literally, dude, says says it and talks about it like it's not a problem. They're like, so this could have happened, and she's like, oh no, no, no. <laughs> No, no, no. This is what happened. Let me tell you a story. And she just starts talking. And they were kind of like, well, wait, damn, I didn't even get my pen. Hold mm -hmm. on, hold on. She's like, well, blah, 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 blah. And just starts talking. It's insane. And then you watch Michaels, and he's bawling. And he's sad. And he's distraught. And he's really showing emotions that 
would leave you to believe what he told his sister could be true. Well, but I don't know how anyone can be attracted to a personality like that where they're just so cold hearted they don't care. Right. That's the only option is my way and that's it. That's all. Yeah. That's not how the world works. No. You know? And you don't have a, a healthy relationship with somebody like that because it's just about them. Yeah. And that's it. It's horrible. It's so sad. It's really just sad. So those are our two stories. A super sad one. And a survivor. Yeah. Probably should have reversed them. <laughs> and did the survivor last. But we didn't. No. Because we were it caught is. off the presses. Yeah. And it is what it is. And it is what it is. So, yeah. We do it backwards here. So, you guys follow us on Instagram. It is what it is. Uh, pod 19. Uh, don't know why the fuck I forgot. Twitter, it is what it is, a true crime podcast. Nope, that's Facebook. Guys, I'm not even with it. <coughs> <laughs> Facebook, it is what it is, a true crime podcast. YouTube, it is what it is, a true crime podcast. And Twitter, it is what it is, 208, because that's where we're from. Don't know why I forget that I say it every damn time. I'm so proud. Hey, you do better than me. I'd have to have a flashcard that I look at every time. Right. And yeah. then you guys can obviously email us to complain, bitch, secretly, whatever. Tell us you like us, whatever you want. Suggestions. Suggestions, yep. anything. And it is what it is. Pod19 at gmail.com. Yeah. So, yeah. Peace the fuck out. Thanks, guys. See ya.